I volunteer you as tribute to talk about that. Me? Yes. Okay. The tour. The tour. <laughs> That's here. The tour starts here. Um, introduce yourself in the form of a poem. Um, do you know how difficult that is? Because, like... Oh, God! <laughs> Just busting out a rhyme. <laughs> I am Laura. I write and I bike and I ski. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> I'm trying to make a rhyme. Okay, so, um, my name is Liz. I am a poet. This tour will be the business and we know it. <laughs> that was so shit. Kia ora koutou at Nga Mihi Nui Ke Koutou Katoa Ko Tititea Te Monga Ko Mata O Te Awa Ko Oscar Te Waka Ko Pakia Toko Iwi No Wanaka Aho I am very professionally putting the bike trailer onto the bike because I was taught how to do it two minutes ago and I remember. Hey, fuck. <laughs> Laura, can you come help me? Uh, we're gonna spend five days riding the Otago Central Rail Trail on e-bikes. And so we're gonna be performing in the old halls of the rail trail every night for five nights. And uh, it's a spoken word tour, which is also a pun. And we're going to stop punning now. And uh, no, we're not. <laughs> we probably won't. Well, actually, stop we punning. probably won't. And we're using e-bikes because we're actually towing all our gear in these trailers, which will be very heavy because they will have amps and beer in them. So, thanks, battery. Sort of what I'm most excited about is that I don't have any idea what I'm getting myself into. So we. I don't know, we've got a map, so we just get up every day and take the trail in the right direction towards middle march and then stop when we get to the next place. It's the landscapes around here are ridiculous. You know, like you you just step out amongst it and you wanna write an opera, you know? Have you biked it before? Yeah. Have you written an opera? I have not I've not written an opera. We've been planning this trip for almost two years, so it's just really exciting that we're actually gonna get on the trail tomorrow. I can't wait. I can't wait to go see Shadow Creek and get over to Ophir, which is an amazing, beautiful small town, and uh, I can't wait to revisit it. We're not even on the trail yet. We're in Clyde. We're um, staying in a lovely little Airbnb and we're folding zines up as we speak to you. We're at the start. Yeah. I've written a poem about cycling and it's called Advice, a Bike Poem. And it has some lines in it about things you should mind when cycling a long way. One, once you drop in, you will not be able to stop. Best to think it through, but don't hesitate either. You can ride more than you know. Two, the front brake is evil, stay off it. Three, your seat is probably too low. Four, bar end plugs are important. When the handlebar hits your chest, you don't want it to break through to your heart. Five, chain rings are sharp. Six, while climbing, keep your elbows close. Loosen your grip. Breathe. 
No, the summit you see is probably not the top. Seven, always take zip ties and tape. Eight, on a long ride, do not wear underwear. Nine, remember you are always going somewhere and where you look is where you will go. Don't stare at the edge, look ahead, look ahead, look ahead. Cheers. Cheers. Well, we had an eventful ride today. We left from Clyde. Well, Laura was in charge of logistics and we're going to sack her because she... Um, uh, we managed to get lost in the first 10 minutes. Uh, I was promised vegan donkeys. They turned out to be not vegan donkeys, but they're gluten-free donkeys, um, which is fine, but not interchangeable. Pretty soon after we got out of Clyde, the wheels literally came off. Then the wheel came off again. And uh, yeah, arrived at Ophir about half an hour before our show was about to start. <laughs> Distance when tame Gives more than it takes I can't say the same For time uh, Yes, this is my new house, the um, Ophir Peace Memorial Hall. Um, opened in 1926. Uh, I've got some good flags, some great windows that need a bit of cleaning and um, you're all welcome to visit me anytime you'd like to. This whole idea started here. So um, I've been coming to Ophir for probably almost 15 years um, and it's a place that for some reason speaks to me, I'm not sure why. Um, but the last time I was here was two years ago and uh, I arrived at the end of the day and it was cold, it was close to winter, the sun was going down and there was this kind of ridiculous beautiful light uh, shining right on this hall. And I wandered up and looked at it and there was a poster uh, for a community production of the West Side Story that was taking place here uh, the next night unfortunately. Uh, and I thought, man, I would love to perform in that place. And that's kind of was the genesis of this whole tour. The faster you go. So Laura has this poem called Reuters Photo, Haditha Era, which uh, last time when we toured, I had to read it because we would all cry. And this time Laura read it and I cried. And it's just really beautiful to hear it. So that was a really special moment of tonight's show for me. I rarely read this in public because I find it very hard to get through it. And often, sometimes when we were performing, uh, we read each other's poems, and I've always had one of these guys read it. So uh, I wrote this a lot of years ago when I was mad at the world. Um, it's called Reuters Photo Haditha Iraq. Small feet trust the tracks of big ones, not knowing some footfalls are horror, not knowing to take steps to evade them, steps just learned besides. Instead, one foot tucks protectively over the other, a pair to the end. If I could peek over the curvature of the earth, would I? But I might see this. A little boy in his pajamas with a train in his lap. He only wanted to park it at the station before he died. Rather, I stay here where it's summer still, not winter. And no one will notice our children getting ready for bed. Small thoughts on the Southland beach. If I were her, I would post his tiny shoes to them. Airmail with a note. He wore these to the tie line and he took them off to see what shape his souls might make. He saw his mark and he said, it's mine.
Uh, Hayes Engineering is amazing. You need to talk to Liz more about it. <sighs> so that is a place. Essentially, you've got old machinery there um, in these big old sheds with like so much bird shit in the ceilings, it looks like decoration. Forge and smithy, durability before cheapness. Do the work of a dozen men. Colonize, settle, spin the wheel. First cost, last cost, stop the machine if necessary. Check, up, press and guard before you start up. All cut, all shaped, all mannered the same, two tubes snug. One turns, another turns, one turns away to make it work. Invention is the mother on two wheels and everything is material or it is immaterial, floating, dust between us. I don't know why I've never been there before. I don't know what I've been doing with my life. I've never done this before. So we're in Otirahua. It's a gorgeous little town uh, just off the rail trail. Population of about 40 uh, and a very impressive poetic pedigree that has grown up in this area. We are in the Otirihua Hall. Ken, who is one of the people in charge of the hall, has rigged us up a spotlight, so we are feeling pretty fancy, if I'm honest. Interestingly, some of the tropes that we associate with each other generally are being challenged. Like, Laura isn't always good at logistics, for example. No, I never actually said I was going to fire her. Well, Laura was in charge of logistics and we're going to sack her. My logistics side is having trouble wrangling my artist side, um, which has resulted in some broken things. I don't know if Liz told you because we might not want to reveal this, but we also had a, a crash today. <laughs> I've left half my clothes behind at our first Airbnb. So um, I'm just going to try and nail the logistics tomorrow, not break anything, no crashing, and we get to the venue on time. We are making our way towards the South Island's Art Deco capital, Ranfurly. The kilometer markers go by like years, except these, we know, lead to a happy ending. We give each other tips. The back wheel follows the front. Best you point it where you want to roll. And together we know the feeling of being able to say, this is the high point of the climb. Find a shelter in the woods, fill it with women, and I won't tell you all, but things get said about the Canadian prime minister, tortoises and whores, and the comic potential of the number six. What we've lost, hot talk. I haven't put myself in danger for so long. Some people rue the rain, others revel in the wet, some stop at the mud, others push on through. So here we are, soaked and drinking and well done, watching the mist dust the trees. These are the high points. We are in Thurl, or Ran Vegas, or Ranas. Today's ride was pretty beautiful. So we kind of took our time once we left Aturihua. If I'm honest, there was a lot of having little lie downs along the way. This really nice lady stopped to take our picture because she was so impressed that we were traveling with young children. And then she was terribly disappointed to find that our trailers were full of uh, amps and microphones and lollies. We are in the Centennial Milk Bar, which is a council-owned building um, full of amazing things. There's radios and typewriters and hobby horses, doilies and lights and 
toasters, furniture and the mannequins. And Great Gatsby style clothes and green toasters. And glassware and a full dining table set up. I have never uh, performed in quite such a place before. It's such an amazing spot. I'm wondering if you mind if I take a picture of you out there in the audience? This is the, so this is the first time I've done this. That's how amazing this space is. Let's keep going. Yeah, the ride today was big. Um, it was less big than we'd psyched ourselves up for. It was our biggest day by far. So we had more than 65 Ks to go, um, which with the trailers uh, is still a pretty big ride, even with the e-bikes. Just beat the rain because it was starting to come down in quite big, large drops as we entered the town. So this is the Strathtyree Community Hall. It's a beautiful, big old hall. This is our last show, the Rail Lines Tour, so that makes it pretty special. You know, I had the local publican and shopkeeper come up to me afterwards and said, I've never actually seen poetry performed before, but I thought I'd come along because, you know, you guys rode here. And um, afterwards they were like, I actually think I like poetry. I didn't know that. Prove that you're not a robot. Check all the boxes with crosswalks, traffic lights, fire hydrants, buses, trains. Prove that you're not a robot. Optimize, improve, do more, do right, write lists. Prove that you're not a robot. Cry quiet with the rain. Close your eyes, dream electric. Prove that you're not a robot so you can progress to the next screen and the next and check all the boxes with sidewalks so the robots can learn how to drive. Check the hydrants, stop at the lights. Prove that you have skin in the game. Pay with plastic. Use adaptogens. You haven't touched another human in weeks. If a leaf falls, can you? If a leaf falls, can you? If a leaf falls, can you prove that you're not a robot? Teach the robots you know what's what. Check all the boxes with red lights, greens. You cut, you bleed, you sew, you click. Prove that you're not a robot. Submit. <laughs> Showing people that poetry isn't something that belongs just in the classroom 
or in university halls um, or even in libraries. It's something that you can take out on the trail and take into halls around the country and take to people who uh, don't classify themselves as readers of literature. I am a little bit tired. I'm also a little bit sad that we finished the trail, you know. It's been, yeah, a great ride, um, hilarious and inspiring and something that, yeah, as Laura said tonight, it feels like the beginning of something. I was just thinking back uh, how we really started this journey probably two years ago when we, we came up with the idea for it. Um, and it took us a long time to get here. We thought about doing it this time last year, um, but life got in the way, so it, it's really cool just to know that this has come into fruition and we have shown that you can run a zero emissions poetry tour. There are a lot of people in the world today who wouldn't be able to do even this small simple thing, so we're very fortunate. All those magic moments we had on the trail and in the halls and at our accommodation and in the towns and just hanging out um, as friends and writers and yeah, just reconnecting with these places that are quite dear to our hearts. So we made it to the end. Pretty special to actually make it. <laughs> That's it. As you watch the sunset, the final sliver you see, before it goes down completely, is actually a mirage. It is nothing but gravity, rays bent towards you a curvature of the sky. The day doesn't end when you think. The last bit of light is a lie. 